This question is a great example of why we always need to look at the answer choices before we start diving into the question. The question wants us to find the line of best fit, so we're going to come up with an equation. The choices make that clear. But notice that the choices are not varying the number, right? So we don't have to calculate the slope. We don't need to calculate the y-intercept. There's only, you know, basically two options for each. And so this is really just about how y equals mx plus b functions, not about doing any calculations. We could plug points into equations here if we were really stuck because we have these kind of like, the dots don't matter, but we have the line and we can kind of find a spot along the line that makes some sense, maybe something like here, uh, 3, 8, and plug that into the equations and just see which one is the best fit. But... We don't need to do that. That would only really be useful if we had different numbers between the choices. Here, it's just positives and negatives. So let's think about those things. I always like to start with the y-intercept because it's easiest to spot, right? That's the point on the y-axis that the line touches. So that would be right here. And we can see, uh, you know, it's it's around three, but it's definitely not negative three. So we, would, we have these uh, two negatives in C and D. And notice what they did too, I guess, to twist things up. We think of y equals mx plus b with the y-intercept as the second component. But because we're just adding these two things, we can kind of move them and swap them, right? Addition and subtraction work that way. You can kind of like change the order. And so that's what they did here. They really just rearranged these as y equals b plus mx. So when you're learning about lines, don't worry so much about which comes first and which comes second. Worry about the other piece, the thing that doesn't change, what number is attached to the x and which number is kind of off on its own. The number that's off on its own is the y-intercept. So that's why I can get rid of the two negatives because those numbers don't match. We need a positive 2.8 and so only a and b match there. If we then think about the slope, right, the part that is attached to that x, this is clearly a positive slope, right? It's going up to the right, so that's a positive slope. We need to know that. And so in this case, the plus 1.7 tells me that that is the only one that makes sense. A negative slope would look more like this, and so that would be what choice B would look like, and so we don't have that. So this never required any real calculation, just a basic understanding of y equals mx plus b and positives and negatives on a graph. That's it, so don't dive into doing like slope calculations just because that's what your teacher tends to ask you to do. Just use the answer choices to kind of gauge what the real question is. It might not be specific in the question itself, but the choices can kind of give us smaller ideas to think about and we can almost do like a, a process of elimination to get it right. That's much better than doing math.